Hello, dear friends of Inside Opera and Classical Music, and welcome to our first video. Speaking of the great Italian composer Giuseppe Verdi, not only of his music, but also of his life, it is impossible not to meet the name of his first real supporter, Antonio Barezzi a fundamental figure in Verdi's life and that's also marked his musical path. But before delving into his life and his influence on Verdi's musical destiny, I remind you, if you haven't yet done, to subscribe to the channel, it's free and you help the growth of this wonderful community of classical and opera music lovers. Antonio Barezzi was born in Busseto, in Italy, on December the 23rd, 1787. He was the first of three brothers, all art lovers. So much so that his brother Stefano was a painter and a restorer, while the other brother, Orlando, loved music and was an amateur musician. In fact, he played a very special instrument of recent invention, namely the trombetta a chiave, trumpet with keys. Antonio Barezzi was also an amateur musician and, in fact, played flute and clarinet and it is said that he also played horn and ophiclide, a brass instrument that we could define as the grandfather of the saxophone. Antonio Barezzi was a landowner and merchant of wine and spices and also distilled liqueurs, a wholesaler to be clear. His house and also his shop were in the main square of Busseto. Verdi's father, Carlo, owned a tavern in Roncole di Busseto and used to buy wine from Barezzi. In this way, the two families, Verdi and Barezzi, had relations with each other. And so Barezzi met little Giuseppe Verdi, for whom he immediately showed great affection, taking him still a boy as a shop assistant. Thanks to Barezzi and his love for music, a philharmonic society was founded in Busseto, what we can define as an association of musicians, and was founded on August 16, 1816, and Barezzi was appointed president. To understand how much he cared about music and this nascent society, he had made available the living room for rehearsals and concerts. Can you imagine an entire philharmonic playing in the living room? This philharmonic society had Ferdinando Provesi as its director, who was also choirmaster and organist for the cathedral, and was also the first music teacher of the very young Verdi, and soon involved him in the activities of this society. Provesi gave him mainly lessons in piano, but Verdi was also able to obtain from him a more complete training, which also included the technique of wind instruments, the instruments that were used in this philharmonic society. Moreover, Barezzi had noticed the musical abilities of this very young Verdi, and provided for him to study at his home on a beautiful piano from the Fritz factory in Wien, and no longer on that little spinet that Verdi had at the Roncole, now become inadequate for him. Verdi thus began to perform the first piano concerts in the living room of Barezzi's house, and to perform with the Philharmonic his composition for band, cantatas and sacred pieces. As he himself wrote, the pieces were hundreds. Barezzi believed very much in the talent of the young Verdi, so much so that he employed him as a singing and piano teacher for his eldest daughter, Margherita, who soon became his official girlfriend. However, Busseto was obviously too small to be able to guarantee adequate musical education to a young man in search of success in the world of music, and so it was time for Verdi to enroll in the Conservatory of Milan. The studies were really very expensive for Verdi, but Barezzi, despite having a business and a large family to support, since, in addition to the firstborn Margherita, had five other children, he decided to support him. 
Verdi could obtain a scholarship from the Monte di Pietà e d'Abbondanza in Busseto. This was a pawn shop and it had a particular function. In fact, the people who died without heirs could allocate all their possessions to this pawn shop, which would convert them into scholarships for the young people of the place, particularly promising in science or arts. So Verdi could very well fall into this category and thus obtain a subsidy to help him continue his studies. Barezzi decided to act as a guarantor for Verdi at the pawn shop and to pay him part of Verdi's subsidy. He guaranteed all expenses for one year and then undertook to increase the subsidy provided by the pawn shop over the following four years, which was 300 lira per year, an insufficient amount for a young man who had to pay his studies and live in Milan. Barezzi thus assured him another 300 lire, giving Verdi the peace of mind to study. Unfortunately, Verdi did not pass that mission exam at the conservatory, and this could make his musical dream vanish. However, Verdi found a way to study with maestro Vincenzo Lavigna, who was the harpsichordist at the Teatro alla Scala, and Barezzi, as promised, covered all the expenses. Barezzi also found him accommodation with his friend Giuseppe Saletti. So Verdi studied in Milan from 1832 to 1835, and in the end Barezzi obtained only a ridiculous refund from the pawn shop. Barezzi was soon satisfied with the expenses incurred for Verdi. Since on a visit to Milan, he met Maestro Lavigna, who confirmed Verdi's great talent by saying that one day he would do honor to his teacher and to his homeland. Verdi then returned to Busseto and thanks to the intervention of Barezzi, he became the music teacher of the city on March 5, 1836. And we must say that Barezzi fought a lot to get him that job. In addition to this position, he also helped him get another position, that of organist at the church. In the meantime, Verdi asked Margherita Barezzi, the eldest daughter, to be his wife, and Antonio happy agreed, saying that he would never refuse his daughter to a good young man like him, and that if he had no luck in the sense of money, he had skills and ingenuity that they were worth more than a fortune. What can we say, a truly foresighted man? Despite the musical assignments obtained, which guaranteed him an economic survival, Busseto was too small for the young Verdi, who had very different ambitions and also wanted to get away from the intrigues of the country. But the affection for Barezzi kept him. After a few years, Verdi managed to move with his wife and son Icilio to Milan, and here too Barezzi helped him by supporting him also financially. Unfortunately, in June 1840, Margherita fell seriously ill and died. It was a period of serious mourning for Verdi, who in addition to his wife lost his children, Virginia and Icilio, in a short time due to illness. One may think that after such a serious mourning their relationships could slowly break up, but this was not the case at all. Indeed, it was thanks to the moral support of Barezzi that Verdi managed to overcome that terrible period. They remained in contact and on excellent terms. Verdi always recognized him as a father and was immensely grateful for the help he had been given. Even at the peak of his career, his talks went to him, to Barezzi and he also says this in a letter dated March 25, 1847. Dear father-in-law, for a long time it was in my thoughts to dedicate a work to you, who were my father and benefactor and friend. It was a duty which I should have fulfilled before now, and I would have done so if imperative circumstances had not prevented it. 
Now here is this Macbeth that I love in preference to my other works, and that therefore I consider more worthy to be presented to you. The heart offers it, your heart accepts it, and may it be a testimony to the eternal memory, gratitude and affection that your affectionate Giuseppe Verdi brings you. With this letter, Verdi dedicated Macbeth to Barezzi, to the man who had supported and loved him as a son, so much that he was present a few days before at the very first performance of that Macbeth in Florence. And now it is natural to ask, since Verdi remarried, how was their relationship with the new wife Giuseppina Strepponi? Did the relationship between Verdi and Barezzi change? Just in the winter following Macbeth, between 1847 and 1848, Barezzi joined Verdi in Paris to spend a few weeks together. It was there that he had the opportunity to meet Giuseppina Strepponi. But to know what his reaction was, let's hear his own words. Upon my arrival in Busseto from Paris, I have never been without telling the great things I saw in my journey, as well as the welcome I received from you, from Mrs. Peppina, and from your other friends, and I assure you that these memories will remain forever engraved in my heart. You make me hope for a letter from Mrs. Peppina, and I must tell you that I look forward to it and in the meantime you will greet her from my part, together with a woman whom I found so good." So, we can say that their relationships were really good, mutually excellent. Barezzi also traveled on another occasion with Verdi and it was for the first performance of Luisa Miller in Naples. Who knows what immense pride Barezzi must have felt in seeing that the little boy he had in his shop become such an extraordinary musician. In 1867, Barezzi's health wasn't considerably. We also consider that he was almost 80 years old. And it is on this occasion that Verdi, in a letter to Clara Maffei, dedicated him the greatest sign of affection and gratitude. Oh, this loss will be extremely painful to me, poor old man who loved me so much, and poor me, that for a little more and then I will not see him anymore. You know that I owe everything, everything, everything to him, and only to him, not to others, as others have wanted to believe. I seem to see him again, and many years have passed. When I finished my studies in the Busseto Gymnasium, my father told me that he could not support me at the University of Parma, and I should have decided to return to my native village. This good old man, knowing this, said to me, you were born for something better, and you are not made to sell salt and work the land. Ask this pawn shop a small pension of 25 francs for a month for four years, and I take care of the rest. You will go to the conservatory of Milan and, when you can, you will give me back the money spent on you. So it was, see how much generosity, how much heart, and how much virtue. I have known men, but never a better one. He loved me as much as his children, and I loved him as my father. Verdi had written the same a couple of days earlier to his publisher Giulio Ricordi. Antonio Barezzi died in his house in Busseto in the same year, on July 21, 1867, assisted by Verdi and his wife Strepponi. It is said that in the last moments Verdi played for him the va pensiero at the piano, the piano where he studied when he was young, and dying Barezzi whispered to Strepponi, Alme Verdi, Alme Verdi, my Verdi, my Verdi. A few days after Barezzi's death, Verdi wrote to his friend Arriva Bene. Poor Mr. Antonio, my second father, my benefactor, my friend, the one who loved me so much, 
is gone. His venerable age is not enough to mitigate the pain that is very great for me. Poor Mr. Antonio. If there is a second life, he will see if I loved him and if I am grateful for what he has done for me. He died in my arms and I have the consolation that I never gave him any sorrow. Antonio Barezzi was buried in the cemetery of Sant'Anna in Busseto. On the tombstone they engraved to Antonio Barezzi, universally praised of honesty and philanthropy, excellent flutist, teacher and promoter at home of the scenic art, who at Verdi, still young, opened the way to glory. And then he had him as a son-in-law, constantly loving and grateful, in whose arms he expired. To July 21, 1867, 79 years old. Verdi, fond of Barezzi, kept his portrait and hung it on the wall above the piano, as if watching over his work, the man who allowed him to become the immense musician we know today. And if you want to visit the house of Barezzi, know that since 2001 his residence has become a beautiful museum of Verdi memorabilia and can be visited. It is located in the central square of Busseto, in Italy. You can walk through those rooms where young Verdi made his way to the world of music, the living room where he played the piano, the same room where he rehearsed hundreds of pieces with the Philharmonic, the rooms where he fell in love with Margherita Barezzi, a house that bears witness to the great affection and gratitude of Maestro Verdi towards his patron, Antonio Barezzi. Thanks for watching this video! If you liked it, give me a like and a comment! And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell!